Yeah, now Dave's going to do another one with the, with the bowl. Yeah, right here is a uh, singing bowl, actually. And you can actually buy these on eBay if you want to. If you have any trouble getting it to work, email me. I'll give you a hand because there's a few secrets about it, but it's not too hard. And it's filled with water. I think you can see it on the screen, right? The water's moving around. Remember how Mark had to get his, his fingers wet? Well, the reason is you need just the right coefficient of friction on the edge of the glass to cause that energy to transfer to the, to the uh, bowl of that glass. The same reason I got to get my hands wet here, you notice there's two handles here. If you rub these in just the right way, you can actually get this bowl to resonate the same way, and it actually sprays up, and you can actually see you know, the nodal points on this bowl right here. It's, the more you go, you actually almost get a bit of a shower. Okay, so it's resonating at its natural frequency, and I do know some people who actually got this to resonate at a different frequency, which is pretty good. Okay, we've done this on the street here. It's very easy to do. I'll just give you some of the hints about it. Um, now I think we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was never very good. My parents told me to play a musical instrument. I sort of touched my feet in the ground. I was, of course, regretted it ever since. I wish I would have been able to learn. However, so this is the only thing I can play. It's called the singing rod. And very much like a glass, if you drag your fingers over here with rosin on your fingers, just like you would put on a bow for a violin, it will squeak. And this thing will pick up those squeaks and pick up just those vibration rates or frequencies that like to make this thing vibrate naturally. The natural way of vibration is if I hold it in the middle, on the top there, it can't move. <laughs> okay? But it can wiggle on the ends. And so I hold it in the middle so it can't move there, and we should get a lower tone than usual, the lowest of the tones here. Oh, I think my hands are still... There we go. If I grab it on the end, of course, it stops. If I want to do a little higher frequency, I, and on a shorter wavelength, I grab it here at the end. And so I'm going to grab it right here. Let's hope that's the right place. And this should be, the, the other one was, mm, this one should be a little, ee. symmetrically at the other end so I could transfer my grip over here but then when I grabbed it in the middle I was grabbing it at a place that had to be free to vibrate to support that particular wavelength and frequency. Okay, so it's the same as playing a guitar because this is the only thing I can play. <laughs> now it turns out that beakers, normal everyday beakers that you use in science, uh, can resonate pretty much the same way. Let's see if we can get this to come up on screen. Uh, I know it wants to, it just is a little confused. Here we go. Come on. There you go. So we can see the speaker on the camera. Okay. At least I think you can. Yeah, that's the top of the speaker, right? We're looking right down on it. And there's a reason we're going to do that. This speaker can actually resonate. You hear it ring? I have a small uh, speaker right next to the speaker. I know it rhymes, but that's what it happens. You know? so, Actually playing a free, that same frequency of the speaker into of, of the speaker into that speaker, making it ring, and that's its natural frequency. Now let's take a look at that waveform. As you see, let's see, come on up, the waveform. That's how it rings. Now notice when I touch the side, we damp out that speaker quite a bit. That's because we're decreasing the amplitude. Part of the amplitude is due to the fact that that beaker is ringing itself. It's not just the speaker, which is what you get when I put my finger on the edge, but it's also the beaker itself ringing also. So we can be getting a lot of energy into that beaker. And let's see if we can actually see it ring. I'll turn this on. I'll turn this up. Down there. Oops. much, what do you think we might be able to do with it? Great day! Yeah, what we might have to be able to do is actually over-resonate the speaker. And so we'll actually, uh, you know, go past its physical strength to hold itself together. I'm going to put my glasses on, because we want to be safe here at Rutgers. 
And uh, I'm going to turn this up. I might get a little loud for a second, but let's see if we can break it. Of course, I never know if it actually breaks or not. So you do it, you can't paste them back together. So here we go. There it goes. Yeah, 